So I recently started using Edge as my main browser. Wait, 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 wait. Before you stop watching, I know I said a four letter word, Edge, but just give me a few minutes and let me tell you why. I'm also gonna tell you why I don't think Edge is the best browser for web development. I have this video where I show off a cool new feature of VS Code where you can have a browser preview, browser dev tools, and console all inside VS Code, eliminating the need for an external browser during development. But it uses Microsoft Edge. But a bunch of people freaked out when they heard Edge, and some even called me a sellout. By the way, Microsoft has paid me nothing, and this video is not sponsored by Microsoft in any way. I think there are some misconceptions about Edge and some really compelling reasons why you might want to take another look at Edge like I did. Now, I know Microsoft has had a bad track record when it comes to browsers, but do you really know the full story? Let's take a trip back in time. The browser wars have been going on since the mid 90s. Before the Mosaic browser, there were only text-based web pages. And then came Netscape Navigator, which was $49. Then in 1995, Internet Explorer launched and was free. And because of that, IE quickly became the browser king. Now take into account that at this time, there were no web standards at all. It was like the Wild West. In 1999, Netscape became free, but it was already too late. IE was on every computer, mainly because it came bundled with the Windows operating system. And because of this, Microsoft was actually taken to court for violating antitrust laws, and years later, the case was settled. Now, even after that, it wasn't until the mid-2000s that another competitor was able to gain a considerable market share. Firefox began to take off around 2005, and Safari was able to gain a small percentage of users as well. Then in 2008, Google released Chrome. It took a couple of years to gain momentum, but quickly overtook Firefox and eventually even IE in 2012. Now again, keep in mind that when IE was first created, there were no web standards. So as new web standards began to be adopted by other browsers, IE decided to do its own thing to its own demise. So Microsoft announces a replacement for IE in 2015, Edge. But again, Microsoft doesn't get it right. Edge just couldn't compete. So the Edge that released in 2015 became known as Legacy Edge, and a new version of Edge was introduced in 2020. This time, Microsoft made a good choice and based this new version of Edge on the open source Chromium project. So that's only about two years ago that this new version of Edge was introduced. So keep that in mind going forward. Oh, you're still here. Um, well, go ahead and just like the video real quick and subscribe if you don't mind. Thanks. Okay, so what gives Edge an edge? Well, extensions, privacy, features, and performance. We're gonna talk about each one of those. So first off, extensions. One of the biggest complaints about the original Edge was the lack of extensions. So since this new version of Edge is Chromium-based, Chrome extensions work just fine on Edge. I've never found a single extension that didn't work for me. Now, a lot of us are very concerned about our privacy. Google's main income source is advertisement. So Google is all about tracking and creating personalized advertising for each individual. Microsoft, on the other hand, has a very different business model where their income is not mainly from advertising. So in Edge, they've made privacy settings very easy to set and understand, and there are even more settings than in Chrome. Now let's talk about a few features that I really love. There are lots of great features to Microsoft Edge, but one of the cool features that I really enjoy, you're probably gonna hate. So I like to turn on vertical tabs. And now the tabs are off to the right. The cool thing about this is you can actually read the entire title and you can resize it to make it longer or shorter if you want. Also the tab grouping is cool, which is it's available in other browsers as well. But if we highlight all of these, right click, add tabs to a new group, then we can name this cool tabs and pick a color and there we go. So now when we add a new tab, you can easily see that these are grouped close it. Nice. Another thing that I think is cool is if we go to a blog. So let's take a look at this blog on Dev2 from Savio Martin, 20 killer JavaScript one liners. There's a lot of distraction on this website. So up here in the menu bar, we can hover over this and enter immersive reader. So this is really cool. It gets rid of all of the distractions and you just get the words. Your text preferences, you can change the font and the background. 
and you can even have it read aloud. 20 killer JavaScript one-liners index pointing up DEV community woman technologist man technologist. The only thing it's not great at is when we get to code snippets, mm, may not be the best. Another great built-in feature is the web capture feature. So if we click this, we can capture just an area of the screen or the full page. Let's say I just want to capture this part here, and then I can actually mark up on the capture before I copy it. And of course, Edge is available on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. There have been many performance studies on all of the major browsers, but most of them agree that Edge is slightly more performant. But I'm going to tell you what my personal experience has been. My name is Jesse, and I'm a tab hoarder. At any given time, I could have over 100 tabs open across multiple browsers. I'm sorry. When I used Chrome, it gobbled up my RAM. After switching to Edge, it's noticeably faster and uses less RAM. One reason for this is how Edge has implemented tab timeouts. In Edge, they're called sleeping tabs, and in Chrome, I think they're called freezing tabs. Chrome's implementation is based on memory usage, so when your memory gets low, Chrome will freeze idle tabs to save resources. Now, Edge took a very different approach. They chose to put tabs to sleep after a user-defined amount of time. Now, the default setting is two hours, but you can choose anywhere from five minutes to 12 hours. You can also add sites to a never put to sleep list to prevent them from ever going to sleep. You can tell that a tab is sleeping when it's faded out. And when you click on it again, it wakes up very quickly. And because of the decreased RAM usage, you'll also get better battery performance on laptops and be able to stream video longer than other browsers. Okay, so what is the best browser for web development? Well, because Edge is Chromium based, you have the same developer tools that you're used to in Chrome. So I could say that Edge is the best browser for web development, but it's not. All of them are. There is no best browser. You have to test your websites in all of the major browsers throughout your development process. There are little quirks with all of the browsers and you have to make sure that you provide a consistent experience across any major browser. Now, there are other great browsers out there like Firefox, Brave, and Vivaldi. Most of these alternate browsers, besides Firefox, are Chromium based. And depending on the situation, I'll go between Firefox and Edge during development because there are different developer tools in Firefox than in Chromium based browsers like Edge. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite browser is and why. Maybe I've been able to help you see that Edge is worth trying out. And if you do, let me know what you think. In the end, it's totally fine for you to use whatever browser suits your needs. Now go check out my VS Code DevTools video if you want to see how to get browser dev tools inside VS Code. Like this video to help me out and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.